Alright, so let's go ahead and label this um, graph number one. And we just graph sine of x over two periods. And my question is this. <coughs> So question one, is this a function? And question number two, um, can you take the inverse? Go ahead and take two minutes to discuss that with your partner. Uh, Jocelyn, is this a function? Yes. Why? Anything else? Pass my driver's license test. Doesn't mean I know how to drive. <laughs> Anybody else? Any boy? <laughs> this circle here is not a function. It's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. At this point here and this point here, if you made a table of values, x, y, you would realize that, if, let's just say it's one unit, what's the order pair? Zero, one. Zero, one. Zero, one. Zero, one. and that one? Zero negative, one. Zero, negative one. So you have one x value, you paying attention, to two y values. One input to two output. The example I use is if you had your phone out and you press the home button. The home button should just do one thing. Go to the home screen. Your phone's probably messed up if you press the home button and it changes all of your grades to an F. Do you want to press the home button and not sure if you're, you're going to get to the home screen or it turns all your grades to an F? Do you want that? No. no. So that would be bad. Okay. So here we want one input to one output. One x value to one y value. This is why this fails the vertical line test. Javier, can I take the inverse of my graph in pink? No. Why? No. Fails the what? The horizontal line test, right? So anywhere in this graph, goes through once, go through once, go through once, go through once. It's a function. That's the cheesy way. The vertical line test conceptually is low understanding. The table of values and this one's better. So I'll put a little star. That's a better answer. Now, if I turn my ruler sideways, that's the horizontal line test. One, two, three, four. Too many, right? I only need one point there. So this fails the horizontal line test. So here's the question. How can I take the inverse of the sine function if it passes the vertical line test but it fails uh, the horizontal line test? Anybody know? Every 15 minutes, someone back. Alright, so if I look at this graph here, I need to do something. I need to figure out an area where it passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. If I look for a window, the window is here. So my second graph, if I do something called restrict the domain. Everyone say restrict the domain. <laughs> I could restrict you from going to lunch. I could keep you in this class and you probably wouldn't be happy, huh? Yeah. So that's called restricting. You're staying within a window. Now, if I copy this graph here, I'm going to highlight a color and I'm going to make it purple. Class, does this pass, uh, is this a function in purple? Yes. Why? 1x value to 1y value passes the vertical line test. Inside the green window, this purple graph, does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes. So that means I can take the I can take the inverse. Okay? 
So let's go ahead and draw that graph. Now, in this graph, all I need is, um, I messed up. It should have been negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, let's make it a little bit bigger. Negative pi over 2, pi over 2. And my graph has a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. Let's draw the uh, purple graph. Here, there, and I gotta go through there. And look something like that. Okay? Alright, now as, as I look at this graph here, I want to know, well, what does the inverse mean? We've actually talked about this before, haven't we? Yeah. What does the inverse mean? Talk to your partner, 20 seconds. Omar, can you tell us what the inverse means? The opposite, okay. I'm going to draw a line, and this line that I'm drawing here in red is y equals x. I can interchange y equals x or x equals to y. Um, that's the inverse. It basically says switch x and y. What do you do, class? Switch. Do you guys remember that? Yes. We turned it into y and f of x, yes? Okay, so if I make this graph, I didn't do a good job of my graph. But if I want to change that graph to go across that line, again, I did a really bad job, very poor job. My graph's going to look something like this. This is my purple. I'm trying to draw a purple box. My purple graph, graph number two. And that graph in the orange is reflected over the uh, equation y equals x. It basically helps us switch the x's and y. So watch what happens. Let's graph it again. And now we're going to use graph number three. Okay, so you told me the inverse means switch the x's and the y's, yes? So whatever I put here on the x-axis is going to go where now? The y-axis. So I'm going to write up here pi over 2. And down here I'm going to have negative pi over 2. And instead of having the y-axis now of 1 and negative 1, which we put now in, uh, now we're going to take the y values and put it where? On the x values, on the x-axis. So this will become negative 1 and this will become positive. So in orange, my graph's going to look something like this. Now I'm going to admit to you, this is very theoretical, conceptual, and we're just trying to get to a chart, really. But I'm trying to explain to you guys where the chart's coming from, so I'm just something to know. Okay, this is what I need you to do. I need you to um, get the domain and range in interval notation of the purple graph. So I'm going to write purple. 
and then the orange graph. So you should have a total of four interval notations. One, two, three, and four. Okay? Ernie, tell me the domain of the purple. Ernesto? Sorry. <laughs> I have another Ernesto. I must be called Ernie. Sorry. I apologize. Ernesto? <laughs> Parentheses or brackets? Yeah, because I can actually pick that point, right? And Ernesto, your range? Symbols? Great, you're happy got that? Awesome. Michael? Orange? And the range? Raise your hand if you got that. Great. Class, what did you notice between the purple and the orange? What switched? Ah, the domain and the range switched. Does that make sense? Think about that. What's another name for the domain? The X became the Y, and the Y became the X. Alright, you might be asking, Mr. Ng, you just took me through a long journey of red, purple, and orange. What was the purpose? The purpose was a chart that we're going to get. So basically what I did, we graphed sign. It's, I can, it's a function, but I can't take the inverse. If I restrict the domain in green, then I get this graph in purple. If I want to take the inverse of the purple, I get the orange graph. And this tells me something about sign and its restrictions. Recording. <coughs> All right, so prior to this, we just spent 20 minutes. Um, you can look at the previous videos, but we spent just the time focusing on the inverse of sign. So here, this is talking about the restrictions of the inverse of the trig functions. In the previous video, I showed you how to find the restricted domain. When you look at the restricted domain, your values for the angle must be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In real notation, your answer must be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, and you can include it. For the inverse of cosine, uh, your angle is going to be between 0 and pi. And for tangent, the inverse of tangent, your answer is going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. But um, remember, those are parentheses because you're not including those answers. To give yourself a visual, so this table right here is the most important because it teaches you what to reject. Um, a visual of this is an interval notation. I have a bracket and a bracket from between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For the inverse of cosine, that's between 0 and pi. And the t inverse of tangent is negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, for most of the classes, we did a warm-up problem. And the warm-up problem looked like this. The sine of x equals 1 half, and we got two solutions. And here's the reason why you only accept one of those solutions, is because pi over 6 is between in our restricted domain. 5 pi over 6 is not in here. So notice how I accepted one but rejected the other. Now let me go ahead and talk to you about some more um, trig uh, function information. So what's the big idea about finding the inverse? <coughs> Remember, you're finding an angle measure through side lengths. Some of you guys are doing this on your projects. You have a right triangle you have an unknown angle and you're trying to find this angle with the side lengths, right? And then you can just use Sokotoa and then you can use inverse. The inverse helps you find an angle. Some other information that's new to you is that the inverse of sine is the same thing as arc of sine. Everyone say inverse of sine. Inverse of sine. Inverse of sine is the same thing as what? 
arc of sine. But notice how there's no negative one. So these are the same. Now, something that you should recognize that's not equal to is this is not a negative exponent. So for example, 3 to the negative 1 power. 3 to the negative 1 power, you make it over 1. You take the negative, you pull it down to the denominator, and you have 1 over 3 to the first power, so that is 1 third. Okay? This does not mean that in this case. So this is not an exponent. So that's why it says not equals to 1 over sine of x. Well, what is 1 over sine of x? Some students said cosecant. That is correct by the reciprocal idea. If you wanted to do this idea of like the exponent, the negative exponent, that would be, notice the, the power of the parentheses. And notice that the symbol of the negative 1, though, is on the far right. So this, you can make this over 1 and then pull this downstairs. That would be 1 over sine of x. So here, this represents the inverse of sine. This one does not represent the inverse of sine. That's why I wrote here, not equal to arc sine of x.